confirming that it's time for us to bring that circle around to complete that link in the, this seemingly endless chain of stories. But to that end, there's a reminder of a story that enables a question to be asked, a very important question. And this is the story in a time long ago in that ancient land of India, where there was a young boy barely entering his seventh year, and his name was Krishna. And he'd been born to parents who were well advanced in their age, but they were, they doted on Krishna, they loved him dearly, and he was a loving and devoted son to his elderly parents. But one day, Krishna was going to fulfill an errand in the nearby village when a town crier, riding a magnificent horse, came into the village, ringing a bell and announcing, who will offer their pure young seven-year-old son for sacrifice to save our kingdom. Well, when Krishna heard this cry, he immediately stepped out in front of the horse and said, I will be the sacrifice. Well, the crier alighted from his horse and said, well, we, we must ask your parents for permission uh, for you to be sacrificed. He said, no, I offer myself as the sacrifice to save our kingdom. We will tell my parents. So with that, uh, Krishna said to the town crier, well, tell me, why is it that I have to be sacrificed to save the kingdom? And the town crier took him by the hand and led him over to a nearby tree. And they sat down under the tree and the town crier said, well, you know that our king is a just and fair man, but that he is also young and virile and has not been able to find a suitable queen. So to bring solace to his life, he has loved to hunt. And several days ago, when he was out hunting and became separated from those who accompanied him, he found himself stopping by a stream to drink of that stream and give his horse an opportunity to sate itself. While he was drinking, he saw a beautiful maiden bathing in the stream not far away, and he instantly fell in love. He followed the maiden to her home and found that she was the daughter of a great sage who had taken up residence in a place in that deep forest. So he approached the sage to ask for his daughter's hand in marriage. He agreed, stating that he would allow his daughter to marry our king only if he ceased killing the animals of the forest and only if his daughter was willing to become the king's bride. Our king readily agreed to cease slaughtering the animals of that place, and the young maiden, having espied the king 
as he drank and herself having fallen in love agreed readily to the marriage. The marriage was instantly celebrated and the next morning the king took his new bride and they rode off on his horse. But the journey back to the king's palace was long and so they had to find a resting place for the night. They found a magnificent tree by the stream out of which he had drunk far downstream. And so they settled for the night, this bringing an opportunity for them to explore and consummate the wonders of their wedded bliss. So the night passed. In the morning, when the king awoke, instead of awaking to the sunshine, he found a great shadow covering the area in which they lay. And when he looked up, he saw that it was a monstrous demon with fangs dripping. And as he looked up at this great apparition, the apparition roared. How dare you? How dare you find comfort under my tree without acknowledging or giving abeyance and thanks for this refuge. For this you must be punished if you do not bring a pure young boy of seven to be sacrificed. I will devour your queen and destroy your kingdom. So you see, Krishna, this is why there needs to be this sacrifice. So with that, the town crier and Krishna went back to Krishna's home to tell his parents they were bereft. They begged, why you, why you, we are old. Who will take care of us now in our old age? And the young Krishna in all his wisdom said, I have had many mothers and fathers before you. But because of my good karma accrued over these many lifetimes you will be taken care of. I will be this sacrifice to save our kingdom. So the arrangements were made within the seven days that it was designated that the sacrifice had to take place. So a great entourage, the king, Krishna's mother and father, and soldiers and others, went to that place in the deep forest where the tree was situated. And there they found under the tree an altar already set up, and the great monster demon standing by with his fangs dripping, waiting in readiness. Krishna was laid down on the altar and his father took place at his head and his mother took place at his feet. And the king stood by the altar with his sword raised above his head, waiting for instructions from the demon to bring the sword down 
into Krishna's heart. But as that moment was awaited, Krishna began to laugh and his laughter rang out through the forest and the trees began to laugh and the grass began to wave in laughter. The mountains shook with laughter and the demon roared, Why are you laughing? And Krishna responded, When we're in trouble, we turn to our mother and father for help and solace. But here stands my father at the head of the altar on which I'm being sacrificed, my mother at my feet. And if our parents cannot help us, we turn to our ruler. And here my ruler stands beside me with the weapon that will bring about my sacrifice. If I cannot turn to my parents or my ruler, then to whom can I turn? So the question that arises, how would you end this story. What is the end of the story for you? Recognizing that all the elements of the story are aspects of our own psychic being. The king, mother and father, the bride, the demon, The shadow. The sage. The altar. The sword. What's the end of this story for you? To whom do we turn? Where is our solace? Where are our answers? Where is our saving grace? When all the aspects of our being all the aspects of our psychic makeup and the dimensions of mind come together. The circle is complete. What arises out of that completeness as our awareness of the end of this story? So we have our answer, don't we? Mm. We have our answer. Mm. And the 
Leben und die ganze Wahl von der Elisabeth. That's right, you bet. You bet. You bet. That was too much for him. Yes. You bet. You only had support from the trees and the grass. And, I mean, the other elements were kind of stacking up. Absolutely. But when he laughed and every, everything and laughs. Exactly. So those other elements become powerless. Exactly. And this is what we find, isn't it? This is what we find. Everything works for us when that circle is complete. So we have our answers that we can formulate and express in different ways, but meaning the same thing, with the same acknowledgement, the same recognition, the same realization. Thank you, thank you.